Okay, so let's make a start by creating a dummy work schedule. So what we want to do is just go to the search bar, have a look for create work schedule, and we should see the task come up. And we're just going to create um, a quick blank one so we can see the load. So we can put in anything for the name. Um, the start date we want to set to 0101 2018. Um, that's a, a Monday, so it's kind of a good time. And then we're going to go to the patterns and just start to put in um, timings that just run down in sequence. And it might seem a little bit weird to do this, but what it really does is help us when we see the the I load a little bit later on, or the the EIB a little bit later on. Um, just giving us reference points for each one of these days. Um, Workday doesn't always give you the the values that you want to see, so we'll just go down and quickly put in one to seven and that will make it a little bit easier. So do that for one, um, and then just jump into a two-week pattern. Um, again, just because of some of the different variances you might get if you're trying to load these en masse, if you can um, get two out, uh, then, then it makes it a little bit easier um, and saves you having to do this whole process twice. So if we do that to start with, um, and on this one it doesn't really matter about the timing, so we can just put in anything. Cool. So when that's done, um, there is a separate section here for editing options. We'll just leave that blank. So hit OK, um, and then we can uh, can just move on. It's uh, it's no biggie for what we're doing. Um, but what we all want to do is just quickly go to the actions um, in to get the reference ID for this value. So we'll need this a little bit later on. So I'm just going to copy and paste it now, and then move on to creating an EIB. So we'll just put in create EIB at the top, get the option, um, just create all it, uh, something again generic for this one. So create uh, uh, an EIB work schedule um, calendars and we'll have it as an inbound event when we get to that too. And it just means that we're importing data into Workday rather than, uh, rather than taking it out. So the important part then is just on get data. So again, quickly searching for work schedule. Everything's fairly repetitive on doing this. Um, so we'll go to work schedule. We should get four options back, and we just want to choose the third one there for the put option um, and make sure that that then goes through. Cool. So when that's done, we can just click OK. And what we want to do now is um, just create a template. So again, back to actions, template model. Um, and it's been a little bit slow. There we go, generate template model. And you get this tick box, but the problem is that Workday wants you to only filter. So if we drop back, um, we can then go to template model and edit. And that's where this reference ID is gonna come in handy because we can edit the template with data options. And then we just put in that reference ID for the one generic one we created. You can use a WID, but uh, reference IDs are better. So hit OK. And then we can go back to generating the template. Uh, when Workday is not so slow, it's being super slow today. Cool. Uh, so back to actions, um, template, generate template model. Uh, now you can see that tick box is OK. You can see that uh, uh, work schedule's there. And then we'll just hit go and done. Um, work date in the background will just start working on what needs to be created. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Uh, it's not like we're dropping out a load of data. So it should be pretty quick and easy. Um, there we go, pops up. So if we just uh, download that and then open in Excel, uh, XML files are a bit funky sometimes, so you have to kind of force it to open Excel, especially if you're using a Mac. And you get a nice pre-populated EIV template. So you can see here we've got the um, number of rows, which should be 14 rows. Um, you've got the dates in, it said two weeks that we're rotating there. All of those optional fields, which we just left in as blank. And then some um, some of the pattern details. But um, when Workday exports some of this, you can see the week two is just sat here in the middle. So we'll tidy that up in a second um, when we just create a, a new version of this. So highlight all the cells. Uh, go.
go down to the bottom and then just add them in as a essentially an extra work schedule we're creating. Update the rows um, to say that this is the second item. Remove the reference ID or you'll get an error. Uh, just go quickly update the name so we know what we're looking at. Um, we want to keep the start dates the same, the number of weeks the same. So this will still be a two week pattern. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll come over to this section and just tidy it up. So that second week, I'm just going to drop out and uh, move to the bottom. I'll delete out the, the rows there, which we don't need anymore. Um, we'll have to delete out the pattern IDs as well, because we don't want to reuse those. So they'll all be new. And I'm just going to clean up the rows. So each week needs its own row ID. And then the week number, I'm just going to get to match as well, just so that this is tidy. Now, you can see in this column, it's got the days of the week. And the reason for doing that with the hours earlier is so that you can easily see which day relates to which hour. So if you remember, um, day one was actually Sunday. So you can see there, um, it's Sunday. Uh, and we can then just go through and start updating actually what the, the time is that we want. So I'm going to just put everything in as um, 9 a.m. shift for week one and then a 1 p.m. shift for week two. One of the tricky bits with Workday when you're doing this is work Excel um, actually reverts everything back to being um, a custom format. So every time that you try and update it, um, it will go to custom format uh, unless you actually have it as a text value. So no matter what you do, if you try and enter it uh, through any of the different ways, it causes you a problem. So if you just drop it to text, enter in 09 colon 00, zero uh, then you'll notice that this then gets fixed. So it, it's kind of stopping that issue that kept kept going on. So um, we'll do week one as 9 a.m. starts, week two as 1 p.m. starts, just so you can see the difference when it loads. And then for the finishing time, again, we'll just set it to text and then we'll do 1700 for the week one. Um, and then we'll also do uh, 11 p.m. for week two. So we'll just drag that down and then just update week two to make sure that's at 11 p.m. Um, and then finally, we just need to make sure in the last column that there's ends just ticked in there. Um, and then one last check, because I deleted a load of rows, uh, I'm just going to add in those back there. And then we can clear out everything that we had at the top. So all good. Um, so pretty quick in terms of updating that, but um, there's not too much to update. You can keep it as flexible as you like. Quick save. Back to Workday, and then we can launch the integration. So we'll just um, attach the file onto onto Workday onto the EIB, um, and then we'll just put it into validation mode as well. Uh, better to be safe to see if we've got any errors. Um, but we covered off most things that get picked up, so it should go through pretty cleanly. Um, and normally, if it's only going to be one record, it's probably going to be about thirty. 30 to 60 seconds to, to get this in. Um, Workday normally takes more time getting the file in um, rather than the processing. The processing time is quite quick. Uh, so 20 seconds in and yep, there we go. So no errors down there. So we can just kick that off now with relaunch. Um, so we'll take off validation, hit go, and this should then run in. So um, again, should be nice and quick um, in the 30 second range. And we've then got a second work schedule put in straight away. But there's always a joy. It's the fun part of just clicking refresh as many times as possible. Um, not that it makes it go quicker, but um, at least it makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, cool. There we go. So completed, no errors. And if we go back to view work schedule calendar, um, we can then see those come up. You just have a look for my schedule two, which we entered. And you can see we've got now two weeks, nine to five at the top and 
one to 11 at the bottom. All good, nice and quickly done. And uh, if you've got more, then you just copy and paste a little bit more on the Excel spreadsheet and load them in.